There we go. One of these days I'll get it right where I turn up the mic before I switch to my screen, but today is not that day. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Oh, 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 fancy new subscription notification. I was like, what is that noise? <laughs> Thanks, Catwater Flame, for subscribing. Yay! Um, welcome. Today we're going to be playing through Vampire the Masquerade Coteries of New York. Oh, good to see you too, Phoenix Goth. Hello, hello, everybody. Hi, not always weak. Hi, Cat. Um, what an exciting night last night, huh? I saw that some of you are catching up with the VOD uh, over at Q Times with the Q&A that we gave about Clear Skies, the Star Trek RPG that's coming up. Next Monday is the first episode, which is going to be incredible. I, we're all so very, very excited. Um, and then throughout this week... Uh, Yay! Oh, everybody's so excited for Clear Skies. That's so cool to see. And then Stream Punks, yes! Uh, Stream Punks was announced. <laughs> um, but throughout this week, if you keep an eye on the Shield of Tomorrow Twitter, which is now the Clear Skies Twitter, but it is verified, so we're keeping it at Shield of TMRW for now, um, it'll be rolling out some information about each of our characters throughout the week. Uh, I think maybe one one or two a day or something like that, up until Monday, the premiere. So we're all very, very excited. Hey, Vanna! Yay! Oh, yeah, there you go. Thanks, Not Always Week. <clears throat> oh, goodness. So uh, I we took last week off because it was uh, New Year's, and I was actually at a retreat in San Diego uh where I got to play a bunch of games that people were testing and I got to bring the game that I'm creating for people to test. Uh, and it was a super informative, super amazing retreat. Yeah, it, it was it was incredible. But I am now a week behind and I, I don't really remember what had happened last time. I think, okay, I chose Toreador. Um, and then it was like uh, I got turn embraced and I remember a guy that like talked like this and he had long hair and he was kind of the person that found me, brought me to the court. The prince was like, la da da, this is, this shouldn't happen. You're going to die now. And then uh, a woman came in and she was like, not on my watch. I'm going to make him useful. Right. And then I left with her being my sire, like adoptive sire. Um... And I think that's where we left off. The category and title are still Pokemon. That's so strange because normally OBS, when I go live, it automatically updates it for me. And on the Twitch app, uh, it says that I am doing Vampire the Masquerade. That's so bizarre. I guess I have to do it through the website. I'll have to take a look at that because that happened yesterday too. Is there anything I missed on the recap? Let me know. The category is the right thing. Oh. Hello, hey, my hybrid. Okay, so I'll leave it for now and then let me know if it gets weird. Well, I know it's gonna get weird. You don't need to let me know. <laughs> uh, oh, great, oh, okay, cool, good. Oh, goodness. Well, I, I think I'm ready to jump right in, right? How about you? Zandpaya, the genre <laughs> When in doubt, do the thing. Like Nick Arcade. Here I go. Boop, 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 into the game. You're seeing Vampire on the iPad app. Great, great. Oh, Sailor Mythica, thank you. I love you too. Okay. <clears throat> Let me know. I I didn't have the the audio coming in from the game last time, so let me know that you hear uh, what's coming through, and uh, let's go. Boo. Your haven is just as you left it hours ago. Although the sun won't come up for some time, you feel tired. You learned something about yourself today, and it'll take time to process. Oh, click. You're not in the mood for television and the few books on the shelves in the apartment are either in languages you don't speak or sound like a boring read. Nothing left to do but rest. You settle in the back room, lock the door. A moment of hesitation, then a decision. This time you turn the light off. 
I get it, Solidar Mystica. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. You think back to Julie. How many people in this city know about this vampiric society? How many are willing accomplices in sustaining it? And the thug you met in the park, if he's not Camarilla, then what is he? Are there independent vampires? How does that work? More questions. You begin wondering if there's ever going to be a night where you can start crossing them off the list instead of adding to it. You close your eyes. You sink into the now familiar void of nothingness. It greets you with open arms, like an open friend, like an old friend, or an open friend. Good evening. Oh, thanks, cat. Oh, do I just hit rest? Rest, I guess. Ominous. Ooh. You open your eyes. It's pitch dark here. The blackness of a coffin drifting in the abyss. Oh, right. The light. You grasp for the switch, flip it up. The familiar cramped room with a steel door and no windows comes into view. You emerge from the bedroom fully awake, just like yesterday. This time, however. Sophie is waiting for you, comfortably seated in the sofa in your living room space. A book in her hand, The Melancholy of Resistance. The title's sure on brand. Good evening, Foxglove. Good evening, Sophie. How did you get inside? Sorry to have kept you waiting. How, how did you get inside? After long and spirited battle, I managed to defeat the lock. That's from something. That's a reference to something. I don't know what, though. Like a, like a Monkey Island-style adventure game, I think. Anyway. She produces a key with... A key chain with a faceted emerald at the end, and jingles it in the air with a wry smile. It's my apartment, remember? Come, we have an appointment. I received word Elysium would be called again tonight on account of you, un your unruly friend from Corona Park. This should be a great opportunity for you to mingle. She keeps talking as you walk downstairs and get into the car. Gregory gives you a slight nod and a small smile while opening the door for Sophie. He starts the car when you take your seat in the back. Most of the Primogen Council is bound to be there, at least those who usually attend. Probably some other important personalities you do well to at least learn about. Who should I talk to? How should I carry myself when inside? More politics? Great. Who should I talk to? Anyone I should talk to when we arrive? Not especially. My advice would be to try to talk to the prince and perhaps reassure her of your gratefulness for being spared. Maybe speak to Kadir on the same topic if you get a hold of him. The Primogen I would advise against. They are rather stuck up and all told. Even, and even if they will talk to you, they might try to secure you for some nefarious purpose. I wouldn't appreciate that. Of course, be respectful if anybody approaches you and strikes up a conversation. You will no doubt be gossiped about, as will I. Keep a cool head. Some enjoy provoking fledglings in stupid acts. Hey, Drea. At any rate, you should behave yourself tonight. Remember what I told you about reflecting on me as your patron? I have a reputation to uphold in the court. Do not tarnish it. There it is. She might have saved you, she might be protecting and teaching you, but it's clear what she's really concerned about. Her own interests. You step into the art hole. <laughs> I forgot about the art hole. You step into the art hole with something of a bad memory. The last time you were here, your entire world had been turned upside down, and your existence nearly ended. But tonight, there is very little outward hostility. Yes, Kadir gives you a look that's definitely intended to remind you of your place, but the prince, also in attendance, seems pleased to see you. Welcome, Sophie. Foxglove. D did I get that right? Good evening to both of you. I understand there is somebody else you wish to present to the court tonight. Yes, prince. They will be joining us shortly. My assistant is retrieving them presently. This better be worth the prince's time. The prince gives Kadir a cold glance. 
Forgive the sheriff's harshness. He's in a particularly foul mood tonight. Something to do with Foxglove's begetter looting his grasp, I believe. Ouch. That must have hurt his ego, even if his only reply is a crooked smile. The mention of your sire makes you feel a pang of emotion again. Whoever he was, he left a lasting impression. One reinforced with your visit to the new... One reinforced with your visit to the show space last night. That's the past. Right now, though, you're back in the gallery and are reminded of your sister instead. Emma frequents this place. Is she aware of these clandestine meetings after dark? A lasting impression in your neck! <laughs> hey, hit boy. Yeah, do you use, don't use his heart hole that way. <laughs> the flaring up of whispers in the gallery hall breaks you out of your thoughts. Gregory enters the room, the jumpsuit-clad, inert vampire still staked on his shoulder. The show's about to start. Sophie's driver places his charge in the middle of the room and nods respectfully to Kadir. The sheriff approaches the vampire and removes the stake from his chest. The captive's eyes flicker to life, and he starts looking around in disbelief. Like a cornered animal, he backs out on all fours, and keeps going in circles until he realizes he's trapped. Kadir steps on the man's chest and pins him to the floor. Why, what do we have here? Oh, fuck. Ah, oh, shit, no, come on, don't! A hoodlum. <laughs> Silence. The sheriff takes on an aura of utter dread. He appears as if he's a primal force of nature that's out to get you, and there's absolutely nothing you can do but shrivel in terror. Oh, the music is very loud. Fix that. Oh, I see it now. There, that should be better. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. The beast inside the beast inside you shrieks, and you could swear it happens in unison with the instincts of some other of the other guests here tonight. It's unlike anything you've experienced in his company during your turbulent first night as a vampire. He really did go easy on you. All things considered. It seems like it takes all of the hoodlum's willpower not to crawl into a fetal position and start crying. But... <laughs> ah. <laughs> no, please! Don't hurt me, man! Don't... You and me are going to have a little talk downstairs at the prince's discretion. Please go ahead, my sheriff. You heard the prince. Get up. Let's go. He doesn't wait for a confirmation. He just grabs the man and drags him, kicking and screaming, out of the room. Conversations start all around you, some whispered, some quite overt. Sophie looks somewhat bored of the whole affair, her eyes wandering from art piece to art piece, clearly finding nothing to her particular liking. Torture in an art gallery? Will Kadir manage on his own? I'm sure he will. What happens now? Let's go with that one. So... What happens now? Was that in the game? <laughs> It'll be at least some minutes before Kadir gets the information he seeks out of this thug. Why not mingle while we wait for him to break? Excuse me. Sophie leaves your side and goes to a corner of the gallery where a group of kindred, some seemingly pretty old-fashioned, gathered. A concierge offers you a drink. Still warm. It smells nice. Just a sip to start you off. A splash over your palate, coating your tongue and the inside of your cheeks. Nourishment. You're left to your own devices. You have a quick look around. The prince is currently talking to a dark-skinned woman that you recall seeing here those few nights ago. She has a cold but noble countenance to her. Their conversation seems to be casual. A loud, shrill laugh turns your attention to the bespectacled man who saw you with Sophie on the night of your judgment. He's making the rounds, chatting up different patrons. You feel somebody's eyes on you. A casually dressed, plain-looking man stands alone near a column, watching you. He turns his gaze away sheepishly, sheepishly when he realizes you've noticed. Try to talk to the prince? You. Chat up the man with the glasses, or confront the man looking at you. Why are you looking at me? There's something about this guy. 
It's not that he's staring at you. Most everybody in the room has at one point or another. It's how he does it. He seems shy, maybe even afraid. It's hard to find a secluded spot in the gallery tonight, but this guy has an entire corner of the room all to himself. He's standing alone, no glass in hand, just a look of worry as you approach. Uh-oh, uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. <clears throat> good evening, mister. Something wrong? So what's so interesting about me? Let's, let's, let's be polite. Good evening, Mr. Larson. Oh, you can call me Robert. Ah, there's fine. <laughs> hey, VA Gamer Girl. <laughs> That's what I decided he sounds like. <laughs> so who are you? You mean like, generally? Say, Robert Larson. I had a professor in college named Robert Larson. He was my acting professor. Anyway. Same as you, a vampire. Though I might not quite look it. I'm one of Prince Panhart's primogen. I'm here on business, in case the prince requires my insight. Usually, so she can hear me out before she ignores me. He, he was a vampire. He was a troll, actually, if we were to give him a mythological being. Not sure if you were paying attention to the other night, but when the prince mentioned diverging opinions on whether you should be executed or not, that was me. I was a diverging opinion. <laughs> so dramatic. Wow, thank you. That's huge, thank you. E even if it didn't change the prince's mind. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. Listen, I don't wanna be rude and I appreciate you reaching out, but word of advice, stay away from me. <laughs> Many vampires in this sect regard my position as primogen to be kind of a joke, you know. You talk to me, they'll notice, and they'll hold it against you. You have a quick look behind you and see that a few of the kindred keep shooting you curious glances. One woman especially, a redhead boasting a fanciful hairstyle, watches you disapprovingly. Some of them already do, I imagine. Excuse me. I need to try and get a word in with a few Primogen members before Kadir returns. Enjoy your night. With just the critical looks of a few kindred to keep you company, you start thinking about who to pursue next. You notice Sophie mingling with the other kindred, clearly in her element, and not to be disturbed. Oh, thank you! Kadir hasn't come back yet, so you probably still find time for at least one conversation. Chat up the man with the glasses. That's my move at every party. Chat up the man with the glasses. This is a party. The man notices your attention, but it takes a few minutes before he pauses his mingling for long enough to actually approach him. He looks at you quizzically. Ooh. What do you sound like? Let's have fun with it. Thomas Arturo. <laughs> Pardon? It's my name. I assumed you'd like to know. <laughs> I knew you. By name only, of course. Foxglove? Embraced just a few nights ago, huh? Will, will, will. <laughs> How's on death treating you? I'm, be I'm miserable. Uh, uh, I'm beginning to like it. You know, I think I'm beginning to like it. Already? Fast learner, are you? Good. Good attitude to have. It'll take you places. <laughs> Will his voice change if we loosen this tie? <laughs> I don't know, maybe. It's, a, it's an ascot. <laughs> he takes a moment to clean his glasses, ignoring you completely until he's done and puts them back on. I'm sorry, got a bit distracted. You know, most of us don't need to wear these, right? I can see just fine without them. But it's a statement. <laughs> Tighten it. <laughs> <laughs> the damn things keep catching specks of dust and other assaulted shit, though. Uh, never stay clean for long. Sometimes they think it's more trouble than it's worth, wouldn't you say? If it's a pain, why wear them? Like I said, it's a statement. 
inconvenience is no excuse to stop pursuing perfection. What else is there, really? All right. <laughs> it's like Kermit the Frog went posh. Ha! <laughs> ah, that was a nice chat, but I have to catch up with a few other fellows tonight. Talk to you later. Genie! Hey, Genie! He doesn't even give you a chance to say goodbye. He's already off, grabbing two glasses of a concierge's tray and handing one to a mustachioed man nearby. A loud exchange near the staircase grabs everybody's attention. Thank you. You can't get LASIK because of the way vampire bodies reset, right? Uh, Kadir is back and the hoodlum is with him. The sheriff pushes his unfortunate victim inside the room. Thank you for hosting. The vampire that threatened you last night is a mess. That stupid hat still inexplicably on his head, covering some of his ruined face in a welcome shadow. He's barely conscious. His shin is broken, you think. Something protruding there, ma making a bulge in the pant leg. <laughs> One arm seems twisted at a strange angle. Very little blood, surprisingly, but clearly a whole lot of hurt. Well, Kadir, did our guest cooperate? Tell your prince your name. It's Howard. And why? Who do you run with, Howard? The, the Midnighters. An anarch coterie, my prince. Active for some time now, though from what this one told me, the name is only about the only legacy the group kept over the years. I see. Hey, Prince, I didn't mean it. I didn't know. I didn't. Oh. A loud crack as some of the guests audibly gasp as Kadir's slap dislocates the man's jaw. A spray of blood creates something like an abstract art piece on the floor. This one is guilty of threatening a member of the Camarilla in claiming a domain without the prince's approval. That would be enough to pass swift judgment. <laughs> Thank you. But he is also an arc scum. My prince. There can only be one verdict. Final death. Do your duty, Sheriff. Unless, of course, somebody would like to play at being a good Samaritan like our dear Miss Langley a few nights ago. The look the prince serves you and Sophie is a cruel jest. Sophie takes it gracefully, smiling and slipping her arm into yours in a strange public show of affection. Nobody says anything. The vampire named Howard jumps to his feet and makes for the window. <gasps> I have celerity! Should I grab him? Ooh, stop Howard from escaping. Do not intervene. Celerity, grab Her Howard. I'm gonna grab him. I wanna use the power. In a split second, you make your choice. Focusing your blood, you dash forward and grab Howard by the back of his jumpsuit, pulling him away from the window. You expect some resistance, but find you don't have to worry about it when a swift cut separates Howard's head from his body. You let go, and the headless corpse slumps to the ground. Kadir is standing between you. Kadir is standing between you and the window, his sword drawn, an ugly smile on his face. Well, Foxglove, your eagerness is laudable, if unnecessary. That Howard fellow couldn't have hoped to escape his fate, not with Kadir's expertise. However, I have made note of this show of loyalty on both your and your patrons' accounts. Hey, I'm a good vampire. I would like to thank Miss Langley for bringing this Anak thug to mine and Kadir's attention. I assume all have found the verdict satisfactory? It's a rhetorical question and everybody here knows it. Then I consider tonight's meeting concluded. Good night to all of you. She steps out of the room and you see that many of the guests motion to do the same. Sophie seems to be conversing with somebody, a serious looking man in a trench coat, about what transpired. You probably have the time to strike up a conversation of your own, too. Kadir al-Azmai is still here, but clearly getting ready to leave, for one. Both Larson and Arturo seem to have stayed around, too. One is still moping around, the other still chatting with the remaining attendants, as if nothing happened in the meantime. Talk to Kadir before he leaves. Talk to Robert Larson again. Uh, we already got those two. Let's talk to Kadir and see what info we can get. 
The sheriff's mood seems to have improved, so you decide there won't be a better shot at saying your piece. He is just shit sheathing his sword as he he's just shitting his pants as soon as you approach him. <laughs> All right, excuse me. I'm at it. He notices you just before his face turns from a melancholic frown to his. <laughs> ay ay ay. Okay. He notices you just before his face turns from a melancholic frown to his regular predatory smirk. You seem to have caught him in a moment of reflection while shitting his pants. <laughs> Oh, my, my day's been great so far, Exodus. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Alright, I take it back. He's not. Vampires don't do that unless you're using Blush of Life in a fashion show. <laughs> okay, anyway. You seem to have caught him in a moment of reflection. What is it, Fox Glove? Uh, impressive work tonight. I just wanted to say I thought your work tonight was impressive. It was over in a blink of an eye. The smirk widens. He's clearly happy with himself. A fan of my handiwork. Interesting. You were this close to experiencing it firsthand. I would have thought you'd get some nasty flashbacks. Still, I have to admit it was I was as surprised as the prince when you jumped on the occasion to stop that Adok from escaping. I was sure Valerie would have beat you to it. If there's nothing else, I'll be taking my leave. Why are you so mean? Do you enjoy being sheriff? Can you tell me something about Sophie? I don't want to seem like I'm spying on my patron right now. <laughs> Why are you being so mean is a dumb question. Do you enjoy being sheriff I think is interesting. Let's ask that. Tell me, do you enjoy this being a sheriff for Prince Panhard? Panhard? Enjoyment has nothing to do with this. It's my duty. When Calebros asked me to fill the shoes of the sheriff and root out our enemies, I was glad to serve the sect. When Helen become, became prince and asked that I keep doing this, I agreed, because I believe in the Camarilla, and I respect the fact that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Live long and prosper. He picks up the sword and turns to the stairs. If more kindred understood that, my job would have been much duller, though. On that note, I wish you a good night. <laughs> Kadir looks like the white version of Tyrion Nan's on Oh no, Anazi from Andromeda. I never watched it. He must be really nervous if he poops every time he sees you. <laughs> I need to watch Andromeda. It's been on my list for a while. And watch yourself. You've messed up my batting average, so I'll be keeping a close eye on you. With that final threat, he leaves the gallery. It's right about when Sophie also ends her conversation and walks over to you. Interesting evening, wasn't it? Come, Gregory's waiting downstairs. She seems preoccupied with something and not in a talkative mood. It's an awkward ride back to the city. Oops. This time, you arrive at another building, just two streets across from your apartment. She brings you upstairs through a very nice lobby and a luxurious-looking hall into her domain. Please, have a seat. I shall be right with you. You take in the surroundings. The apartment is like a gallery, an old-school smoking room that you've seen in some period piece once, and a nouveau riche's living room, meticulously put together. Apologies, old habits die hard. Clearly, some stick with you even after your death. She drags on the cigarette, breathes out, breathes. How, how is she doing that? Can you do that? Oh, yes, you might not know. It takes some practice, but you can keep smoking if you'd like. Other things, too. Experiment, you might surprise yourself. But I did not bring you here to show off. This is where I rest these nights. That door in the back, the bedroom. Similar to yours. I have servants and bodyguards in addition, of course. I brought you here because I need you to trust me. When I told you before that I needed your best behavior to uphold my good standing with the court, I meant it. But that's not the whole story. I have your interest in mind, too. That's why I'm giving you your own haven. Why I'm trying to teach you how to navigate this new reality. But you need to trust me, or else this won't work out. You can come here whenever you feel like asking me something. When you're in trouble, too. Though I hope that won't happen often. 
I would ask you to come here when you wake up tomorrow. I'll have something to discuss with you. I'll be here. Trust needs to be earned. Why not discuss it right now? Since we're here together. I still need to follow up on a few things before we speak. Patience, fledgling. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's silence again. There's definitely something on Sophie's mind tonight, but she doesn't seem eager to share it with you just yet. I'm leaving for another visit. Come downstairs with me. We'll give you a lift. A quick trip, some polite goodbyes, and a promise that you'll show up tomorrow later. You open the door to your haven and gather your thoughts. Pro free haven. Khan, if you piss her off, she sets fire to the blackout curtains. <laughs> Hooey. It's exciting in a way, being dragged deeper and deeper into the society of so the secret society and its rules. Whatever Sophie has planned for you, it's bound to teach you some more about these, this thing you have become. You sink into your vampiric sleep with just a sliver of hope. It's a welcome change. What else? Oh, I can like review the dictionary. And then... Oh, it's the whole thing. Great. Good to know. And then nothing here, right? Rest. Once more, darkness fills the web. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Once more, darkness falls upon the city. You wake up, same as you have the past few nights, in a windowless room. As you pry open the reinforced steel door, you look out to the window... You look out the window to see, invariably, a sky bereft of sunlight. And then it hits you. The hunger. For a moment, you let yourself wonder if there will ever come a night where it's just not there. Given what you've learned thus far, you probably have as much chance of kick-starting your heart with jumper cables. You lock the apartment behind you and head over to Sophie's apartment. You did promise to call on her. Might as well not keep the lady waiting. And hey, what else are you going to do? Call M? She's probably worried. At least she will be once she actually tries to give you a call, which might not happen for a few more weeks. Months, if she's busy doing press for her new piece. You could try to track down your sire, if the sheriff hasn't done that already. After all, he did buy your painting. There has to be a money trail, right? But even if so, what would you say to him? These thoughts put you in a real weird mood. It's a strange sensation to walk the crowded streets, same as you have so many times before, but feeling so disconnected. All these people, you're not one of them, not anymore. You're a vampire, kindred, and you need to carve your own path in this strange new existence, one way or another. Appropriately enough, appropriately enough you arrive at Sophie's building just as that thought crosses your mind. A quick word with the security guard and you're let into the elevator. Apparently, Mrs. Langley is expecting you. Of course she is. You knock and wait patiently as the footsteps on the other side grow closer. Finally, the, the door opens and Gregory, Sophie's driver, invites you in. You find the lady herself standing by the window, silhouetted against the city's midnight glow. She stares out, motionless, like a marble statue. Ooh, it's beautiful. Everything all right? Am I interrupting something? Good evening, Sophie. Good evening, Sophie. She doesn't react immediately, but seems to snap out of some meditative state and looks at you with strangely bleary eyes. Yes, uh, good evening, Foxglove. I was wondering... When you look out at the city, when you see the lights, hear the hum, smell the rain on the pavement, what do you think about? You gaze out. The leaf blower blows in a distance. <laughs> you thought the city couldn't surprise you anymore. You've lived here all your life, after all, but tonight something feels different. You realize in this moment that you have truly changed. Curious hunger for blood? Check. Yes, you know what Sophie means. The way she gazed out that window and saw the truth beyond. You do the same. Whoa, aggressive! <laughs> the view is fascinating. 
each detail absorbing, each angry, every angle a new experience. The familiar made sublime. When you turn to Sophie again, she smiles at you know knowingly. Ah, so you do understand. I had my doubts, but perhaps we are of shared lineage after all. You see, the blood that flows within me is that of Clan Toreador. There are thirteen such bloodlines among us, kindred, though that number has been contested in the past, and these nights it seems not that nothing is certain any more. The clans have gone by many epithets over the years, but the names used these nights have their own roots in medieval times. The original Inquisition, if you can believe it. They used these to categorize us, describe our inherent differences. In time, we adopted them ourselves. Each clan has a uniqueness about it, inescapable, originating from an ancient progenitor, progenitor carried from sire to child. For the Toreador, the gift lies in a sensitivity of sorts. We are uniquely attuned to beauty and ugliness both. We can see either where most cannot. We can see either? Ether? Hmm. A blessing on most nights, occasionally a curse. The sheriff is of my clan as well, although you'd be hard-pressed to see him as such. Poor Kadir. It breaks my heart to see him in this state. Thank you. Coke Zero. <laughs> Blood is caffeine. Still, there is a beauty to it as well. Ooh, thanks. Nothing like a good fall from grace. Try as she might to act playful. You can tell she genuinely cares. She lets her gaze wander for a brief brief moment, but is quick to regain her composure. Pepsi Man! Oh no, the Pepsi Man song. Wow, that's that's old. <laughs> then there are the Ventru, known for their pride and a proclivity to rule over others. The prince represents that clan, and it is quite common in our society around the globe. Where the blue bloods think themselves rulers, the Bruja like to see themselves as preeminent revolutionaries. They call for universal rebellion while being slaves to their own temper. We don't discuss the rabble much anymore, not after they've largely broken off with the Camarilla, to think they were philosophers once long ago. I hope to tell you more about some of the other bloodlines tonight. Uh, how can I tell a kindred's clan? Say I meet a vampire for the first time. How can I tell what their clan is? Usually you cannot, with a few exceptions, perhaps. For some clans, the uniqueness I mentioned bleeds into their appearance or disposition. But even that can be misleading. Outside of a few very specific cases, knowing one's clan is less important than understanding who they are personally. What drives them? Their wants and needs? weaknesses, too. Speaking of which, we come to the reason I wanted to speak to you tonight. That's a great question. What is uh, everybody's clans that are watching? I am Malkavian, but today I'm playing Toreador. It is customary in our society, especially among younger kindred, to organize into coteries. Sometimes these are called by the prince themselves, or mandated by a fledgling sire. In our case, you may treat it as more of a strong recommendation. I want you to seek out companions, not only because it, you need to learn more about our society, but also because it is useful. True friendships are rare among kindred, but having allies, even temporary ones, is something of a necessity these nights. We might be selfish creatures, but we are drawn to each other nonetheless. Uh, Nosferatu, nice. Uh, where should I look for allies? Do you have your own coterie? What if I want to go alone? Where should I look for allies? I was a France. I was just about to get to that. She puts on a mysterious smile. I spent some of my precious time last night asking around, pondering potential kindred for you to meet. Came up with a short list of contacts. I hope you'll appreciate the gesture. Forging a partnership with them might offer perspectives and viewpoints that I cannot provide. Lenses through which to view our kind. They are all members of the Camarilla, of course. More or less. Okay, who are they? Eager, little, eager to learn about them, I see. Good, I'm glad. 
So, let us start with the Tremere. They are a powerful clan, disliked by many, but feared and respected by many more. They have been an important pillar of the Camarilla since the very beginning. They are blood sorcerers. Blood sorcerers? You could swear you once saw them, saw them play at the Apollo. Probably not the same blood sorcerers, though. Sophie Snickers. Oh, child, don't be caught with that look on your face when you meet a warlock in person. They really are adept at using Vitae, their own as well as others, to unique and potent effects. Since they are quite rigid in their hierarchy, the kindred I had in mind for you might see need some persuading. His name is Agathon. From what I hear, he is quite the scholar, very ambitious. The child of a noted Tremere here in New York, Aisling Sturbridge. Spend enough time with Agathon, and I'm sure you'll run into her sooner or later. Maybe Ashley? Ashling? Ashling. Blood magic? Intriguing. A scholar? Sounds boring. Nerd! A chance to meet an important person then? No, 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 no. Blood magic? Intriguing. The whole blood magic thing sounds intriguing. Sucker for aesthetics. There was only way to go, one way to go for me. Ah. Oh yes, fascinating. It is also a well kept secret of the Tremere. Don't expect them to share it right away. Some things have to be earned. Anyway, if you wish to contact the young Tremere, I hear you can ca usually find him in a New Age bookstore on Broadway. The Tremere have one of their workshops there. Gregory will give you the details. Now, this next recommendation comes with a bit of a caveat. As you recall me saying, most bloodlines have unique fe features that might not be obvious at first glance. Well, there is one clan whose members wear their curse on their sleeve. The Nosferatu. Wait, Nosferatu? Is in the German Expressionist classic? No way. No wonder they make their havens in sewers, abandoned buildings, and such. Their appearance is hideous and absolutely and obviously unnatural. Had they walked the streets like any other kindred, the kind would have learned of our existence long ago. Did she just shudder? It's hard to tell with her usual complexion, but you could swear her skin suddenly took on an even more sickly color. The one I have in mind isn't as big an eyesore as the rest of them, but... He is no Adonis, either. Still, he has some talents and connections that you might find useful. Jasper Hartwood. Hey, everyone. Hey, Buddha Fox. Yay! Oh, sorry, you're sick. Feel better. Uh-huh. His name is D'Angelo, and he has an office, for lack of a better term, in the otherwise abandoned Grain Terminal in Red Hook, right next to one of those Swedish stores. The name escapes me. The ones with the awful furniture. What, Ikea? Uh, yes, that's it. Oh, my mind struggles to retain things that are aesthetically displeasing. Oh, burn! D'Angelo does odd jobs for Kadir. Digging up dirt, locating kindred who would prefer to remain hidden. The kind of work the Nosferatu are best at. He's on a case right now. Something to do with kind murders, I think. After your initial brush with our dear Sheriff, I think it would be wise to show some goodwill towards his agenda. Assisting D'Angelo with his investigation might be just the thing. She takes a brief pause to look out the window again. Now come, to, now come the two more exotic proposals. Ooh! I am here for exotic proposals! Hey, oops. Exotic? As if the blood mage and the vampiric detective were business as usual. Hmm. You may have heard about the Gangrel before. They are a wild clan in touch with their beast in a way that others may not dare to attempt. They mostly keep out of big cities, but there are exceptions. Nominally, they haven't been a part of the Camarilla for over two decades. But the one kindred I would like you to meet has a strong, shall we say, familial ties to the sect. Her name is Tamika. Her sire, Jezebel, was instrumental during the Battle of New York back in 1999, the very same battle that cemented the city as a Camarilla domain. Sadly, her achievements have gone largely unrecognized. 
Tamika and her number of siblings still reside in the domain that they were awarded after the battle, Prospect Park. Jezebel herself left the city some years ago, fed up with, a, with being un underappreciated. Anything more about Tamika? You mentioned siblings. Should I contact non Camarilla clans? You mentioned siblings? Actual biological brothers and sisters? No, not in the mortal sense. The gang girls sometimes use the word brood to indicate, chi indicate child or begat by the same sire. As you can probably tell, they do take the whole animal motif quite far. I'm not sure how many of them there are, but they are rumored to be a tight-knit group. The gang girl often act in instinct, so when you meet Tamika or her siblings, be careful not to slight them. They are easily provoked and can hold a grudge for a long time. I speak from experience. Oh, snap. So you see, seeking out Tamika could prove quite educational, if nothing else. And who knows, perhaps you will find her temperament to be a welcome change of pace. But speaking of change of pace, I have one last suggestion for you, though it's one I don't make lightly. The kindred who calls herself Hope. I have a feeling that this might be a Malkavian. Yep! She's a Malkavian. <clears throat> they are a uniquely cursed clan. For centuries we consider them mad, insane, unhinged. But those of us who spend enough time with them come to understand the truth. It is no sickness, but a unique perception of the world that has them appear to us as unstable, and that perception we can, pro can prove to be very valuable. Having a Malkavian as your companion might be taxing on the nerves, and a true test of patience at times, but their insight and intuition are unrivaled among kindred. As for Hope specifically, she is said to be a recluse, but I have it on good authority that she can currently be found in an... Internet Cafe, I believe it's called, in Lower Manhattan. Gregory has the address. She doesn't sound like my type. Nope, she sounds like my type. An Internet Cafe, quaint. Where did you learn about Hope? One of my colleagues told me about her. He considers her uniquely talented and tapped into the current fads among kind. Not something I'm personally interested in, as I'm sure you know by now. I take his word for it, at any rate. Well, I believe that's all of them. I still have a few social calls to make tonight, so I'll leave you to it. Use tonight and tomorrow night to arrange some cordial visits of your own. I will send Gregory for you as soon as I have further need of your services. Oh, that reminds me. You will need a car. Join us downstairs, won't you? Give me a car. Give me a car. Give me a car. She smiles once more and turns to her driver. He helps her put on her coat, and the three of you leave Sophie's apartment. Sophie points to one of her cars near the building as Gregory hands you the keys! It's a rather inconspicuous compact car, a decent looking, if not luxurious, ride! I'm in! Stay safe, Foxglove. This is your first night alone. Don't let it be your last. That was in the game, that wasn't the leaf blower. <laughs> As they drive away, you find yourself with more freedom than you've had for the past few nights. A blessing or a burden? Time will tell. With the list of addresses in hand, you consider your next move. Ooh! It's like um, Kindred Twi Tinder. What was that called? Tender, right? Yeah. Oop. Boop, boop, boop. She looks interesting. Oh, yeah. Searching for Hope. Sophie suggested you meet Hope, a reclusive member of the Malkavian clan. She's supposedly holed up in an internet cafe in Lower Manhattan. Sounds like a plan, Stan. <sighs> okay, hold on. I gotta adjust my old bones. She gave you a BMW bug. <laughs> huh. Does anyone here know that Ivan Van Dorm is making Werewolf the Apocalypse 5th Edition? Yeah! I'm so excited for that. It's going to be great. It's a quiet, moody internet cafe. Half of its space serves as a comfy coffee bar these days, but behind a glass wall, 
it still has a space dedicated to rows of PCs. From the street, you can notice tired adults in casual clothes typing away absentmindedly, and some bored kids wasting the late evening hours on colorful online games. If Sophie's intel is to be believed, this is where Hope has set up her haven. One of the waiters is standing outside the building, gazing at the sky with a smartphone in one hand and a vape pen in the other. You approach the man and tell him, I'm looking for Hope. I was supposed to meet Hope here. I'm here on official business. I was supposed... I'm looking for Hope. Let's keep it honest. He releases a soft chuckle. Yeah, you and me both. <laughs> The man slowly takes a drag from his e-cig, sizing you up and down in silence. After a long, awkward moment, when you're ready to leave him be, he raises his voice again. Come, right this way. He heads back into the cafe, and you follow his lead. Ooh. When you make your way through the space with computers, no one averts their gaze from the spreadsheets, emails, Facebook profiles, or games of Fortnite. It's a common sight, one you wouldn't have paid much attention to a few weeks ago, but now it seems so unnervingly quaint. Would they still be spending their time like this if they were immortal? Ah, uh, yep. The waiter unlocks an assuming, unassuming door at the end of the room and lets you inside. You two swiftly make your way through a labyrinth of sterile gray corridors, taking confusing twists and turns. Feels like you're traveling into a different world crossing one invisible portal after another. Now you're thinking in portals. Eventually, cool. Ooh, I love this. Eventually you reach your destination. Your guide motions you to enter a dark room with a lone source of pale light, a computer screen in the distance beckoning you to come closer. As you do, you hear the door shutting behind your back and a short chuckle echoing behind it. Is this the place? Nothing else to do but sit in a chair in front of the computer. The monitor displays a modern chat application. A cursor is blinking in the user nickname entry field in the middle of the screen, obviously expecting you to input your handle. After brief consideration, you type in your name, a random string of characters, or something goofy. It's gotta be something goofy. We're gonna connect. Maybe it's your newfound sensibilities going haywire, but this place is a barely noticeable sleazy aura. Might as well go along with it. You input pornos collector and push the enter button. Yes, I did do that. After a few seconds, the chat window opens and messages start appearing on the screen in a quick succession. Hostage execu executioner. Oh God! Let me out. Look, for, no, for real. Not much longer. Yeah, Jerry is in the chat. MVP. I'm reminded from worse things. God, I'm so horny. Not sure. I know the thing. I'm, who cares? You and me both, bozo. Wait, who is Pornos Collector? A new user we haven't seen before. What the hell? Anyone informed? Who? 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 Identify yourself within two minutes or get banned, Pornos Collector. The chat goes silent. Everyone seemingly waiting for you to say something before proceeding. This must be a close knit group. Better say something before they kick you out. I'm looking for hope. Uh-oh. Who are you people? I'm a vampire. I'm a vampire. <laughs> hey, everyone. Pornos collector here. I'm a vampire. That'll go well. I should just do that. How about who are you people? Just logged in here. Who, who are you guys? Fulger. Who the fuck are you? That was meant to be a safe channel investigating what went wrong. How did they come here? Stay calm. Yeah, sure. That's our Jerry. Gonna DM it to anyone interested. Oh boy, you're in trouble now, Pornos Collector. Yeah, you're gonna regret. Dumbass. The day you decided to spy on us. <laughs> I love that they put...